Hey guys, I am back again with another video in the WinISD series, and today we are going to be talking about cone excursion. Cone excursion is basically when a speaker bottoms out, and if it bottoms out too hard, it will actually ruin the speaker. And so we're going to talk about um, what that looks like in WinISD and how we can prevent it in real life. So we're just going to do a new project and we're going to use a speaker that a lot of people use which is the Deaton Ultimax 1822 and we are going to use a vented box and the reason why we're going to use a vented box is because typically vented boxes need what we call a high pass filter at about the tuning port um, and we're going to see why that is and that that's because that's where typically cone excursion happens in a vented box so anytime you port a box or vent a box you do have to worry about um, this particular phenomenon of cone excursion so let's let's do that that's not to say that you don't need to worry about it in a sealed box you may need to do it in a sealed box as well and I'm not gonna mess with any of the box parameters or anything of that nature I am going to just change the signal input. The reason why we need to change signal input is because that actually affects the cone excursion and how badly it excurs. Ex excurs is that a word? I don't know. The cone excursion happens. So let's do the system input power of a thousand watts. A thousand watts is the max that this particular subwoofer can take continuously. And so we're going to just assume that if you have this subwoofer, you're going to be powering it at the maximum power and you're going to be using something like a professional amplifier such as like a Crown or a something like a iNuke DSP. So we're going to go up here to the top and typically we're on the transfer function magnitude stage because we want to see where our thing is right now it looks like it is about 13 hertz and f3 of about 12 hertz and our box is tuned to about 14 hertz okay so now we're going to go to driver cone excursion now if you see it says driver in the gray and then cone excursion be careful because there is a passive radiator cone excursion um, and if you click on that you're not going to see anything because we don't have a passive radiator in the setup. So we're going to go to driver, which is your main driver. In this particular case, it's 1822. And we're going to go to cone excursion. Now, you'll notice that there's going to be a red line. Now, that red line will change depending on what speaker you have, because every speaker has a different limit in which it starts to have that cone excursion happen. Anytime it crosses that red line, like here and here, and especially here, that means that your subwoofer is bottoming out. So this tells you what frequency it's bottoming out at. So it says at about 23 to 24 hertz, somewhere in that range, it's going to start bottoming out, and it's going to bottom out until it hits about 17 hertz. So it's from 17 to 24 to bottom out, and it'll also bottom out right here around 13, 4, 13 to 14 hertz. Now... If we left the subwoofer like this and just gave it a thousand watts, we're going to blow the, the subwoofer anytime it hits in the 20 hertz, and especially if it hits in the 13 hertz, that's just going to ruin the subwoofer. So we can't keep it like this. Now, there's two ways that we can rectify this situation. One, especially if you're using something like a full range driver or something of that nature, you can just lower the wattage. Unfortunately, with something like this, the, you have to lower it all the way to like 220 watts. And let's just be honest, that's not going to power that subwoofer nearly enough. I mean, that's almost a fifth of, of what the max RMS power is, and you're just not going to do that. And that makes sense. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to hopefully have a professional amplifier or some type of DSP, which will allow you to add a high pass to it. And what a high pass does is it cuts out frequency anywhere below what we set it at and that sets it at, at a slope so it's not a hard cut off so it doesn't just like cut off you know at 20 hertz or 14 hertz it cuts off at like 14 hertz and slopes a little on either side so we'll, let's show you kind of what that looks like so a high pass cuts out anything lower than whatever we set it at so if we set at 20 hertz it starts a slope at 20 hertz and below and if we did like a low pass, that would be the opposite. So it would be 20 hertz and above. 
So anytime we're working with like a subwoofer or something of that nature, we want a high pass. And that's because we want to basically filter out everything above that. Now most amplifiers are going to have a cutoff of 20 hertz. You usually can't go below that. So let's add it and take a look at what it does to cone excursion. If you take a look, we have a second order Butterworth high pass on there now and we no longer have to worry about that. You are typically going to have to use a a second order which is a 12 decibel curve. You could maybe try a first order that's a 6 decibel curve. Um, e either way we're going to assume a first the second order at first and if you go to transfer function magnitude this is something to pay attention to. It does change the curve so it changes it quite a bit. If you change it back to a first order it's going to change it less. Um, I, I personally like first uh, second order better. I think it gives you a better curve. Now that's okay, but it's not probably what we really really want. If we if you have the right equipment and you can go ahead and do a high pass at anywhere with this particular subwoofer, we're probably gonna want to do 15 hertz. So if we do that, you don't have to worry about cone excursion. Um, and when you go back to transfer function magnitude, you have a much better line. Um, that's just a, a very clean, clear line all the way down to like 14 hertz in a massive, huge box. But that's what you're looking for. So you're looking for what gives you the best line while keeping your cone or your driver from that cone excursion. And you might have to play around with this high pass a little until you get your desired response. Okay, like for example, if you did a 15 hertz and you did a first order, I'll just show you. You're going to create cone excursion now, so you can't do that. So second order is what you would need. But you keep messing around with this until you no longer get that cone excursion, and until you get the line, the linear line that you want. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know about cone excursion. One, watch out for it. You don't want it, so always check it, no matter what you're modeling, and um, and see kind of where where you're at. All right, guys. I hope you learned something, and, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned anything, like always, give you give a thumbs up, and we will be back with another video soon.